gosh, first lady's doing her thing today. Look at all these flowers. Covered. Hibiscus had been so happy, loving this weather with the a friend of mine gave these to me. I don't know what I don't know what to do with them. They can hang out here for a while. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Lost my train of thought. Hibiscus. They've been doing great. They've been loving the fertilizers and the weather. I think the video prior to this one should be about hibiscus, so we probably shouldn't start off on that foot. Probably want something different to talk about. As far as things go for this week, I mostly just need to prune and tidy and basic garden maintenance stuff. I have some shrubs to plant and uh, a few containers over here that... um could use some more color. When I was at the Home Depot in last week's video, buying a bunch of clearance plants, I noticed they still had impatience. So I'm thinking I may run back and just grab a couple six packs just to get some color in the front of these containers. It's something that I haven't really cared about much this year because I spent so much of my time, energy, and money over here on this part of the patio, but there's still enough of the season left to get some color in there. I could wait a couple more weeks and just like pop some mums in there because that's all that's going to be at the nurseries around here in a couple of weeks. Most of the nurseries, not all, but most of them, they uh, stop with a lot of their annuals, or at least the ones you would consider summer annuals, by late July. And then August, it's just boom, mums everywhere, which I'd, I've talked about before. I don't understand. They're going to be done flowering by the time it's actually fall when you get them this early, but it's just, it's the way things are. So uh, I would rather have impatience over there than mums, just have some color. And uh, what I've been looking at right now has been the bananas down here. They need a cleanup. I just need to come in and prune out the lower foliage. Where the foliage hangs over everything, it's making it difficult to get back with the hose and the fertilizers and everything. So I just need to come in and prune out some of the lower growth to open things up so I can get in there and fertilize. Haven't gotten a ton of growth out of them, partially because it was just a very cool spring. That doesn't help with banana growth, right? Bananas like things nice and warm. We've had warm days here and there. As far as like consistency, it's been a weird year and I'm not mad about it though because the weather has been so good. It's been so incredibly pleasant out here. You can see I, I'm not gonna say I missed a weed. There's no way I could have seen it down there. Let's see if we can get back far enough to pull that up. Did I get it from the root? I did. Good. Oh, and any of the, what are these, Colocasia bikini teenies, if they're sticking out over the impatience, I want to pull those, come in here and just, you know, get weeds. I did not get that from the root. And go down further, pull and get the roots. When the sweet potato vines have grown in this much, I don't worry about getting them at the root this much or anything that is surrounding the plant as much because... It's going to be hard for weeds to pop up through there. But they're certainly going to. They're going to try. You can see, like, over here. There, there's a well. There's a way. The weeds will do their thing. The main thing is to get them out before they set flower and get them spread all over the place. Wow. They just come out of nowhere. I think partially it's been just ideal weed weather. Plant weather has been so good. These cooler temperatures and actual rainfall... This year, I think I talked about before about how this July has felt a lot more like how things go in June as far as the rainfall is concerned, and June was bone dry this year. It's had a bit of a role reversal here for the months. Makes me curious and nervous about what late summer or early fall is going to be like. Might have some early freezes, maybe. I also need to clean these up. I don't want them growing over the patio, at least not any more than this. You can see how inconsistent the growth has become on it. And I assume that's just because, well, there's more space back there and these were planted a little bit further. No, actually they weren't. It's just the bed's more narrow. So the impatience are closer to the edge here. So they just didn't really have space. That's going to bug me. So that's another good reason to come in here. I'll probably just use a pair of scissors to clean that out. As I was saying minutes ago with the banana trees, if I come in and get the lower stuff, I hope that the sweet potato vines don't make me standing on them because I don't really have a choice. But come in here and clean up this stuff. Everything that's hanging over. And I can actually direct water back in there <laughs> to get to the plants. When I water the way it is right now, it just splatters back at you because you got a wall of leaves right in front of everything. It's 
Also, sometimes these clumps get so full that I sometimes end up having pest issues because of the lack of airflow and light and everything. That was, this is sloppy. I need to be more intentional with my cuts. Shouldn't just be ripping them off like that. Just trying to get some more airflow down inside here and trying to open things up so I can water more appropriately. That's better. Nice and open. I know it looked nice having the leaves dangling down there, but you gotta remember, they're banana trees and just a week two weeks this is going to be so full you won't even be able to notice that they've been pruned here's an example of why i needed to do this can you see what's going on with this leaf look at that spider mites that's from the inside in there it's what i was saying the pests they start to show up with that lack of light and lack of airflow and they become a problem so i'm glad that i did this now because it's only maybe two leaves that i'm seeing that on so that's go okay what am i this is not switching hands while i'm holding the camera not the best way to do things i can still get in here and name this i'll wait until nighttime and really go back there with a small bottle and just get the alo not alocasia it's like alocasias so that uh you know i don't want to get name on the sun patients that's what these are this really did need to be done though all these right here were completely covered with banana leaves from this banana right here so the, look at there's barely any flowers on there poor thing wasn't getting any light Okay, this is good. That needed to be done. Look at all that. Got a whole bunch out of there. And things are nice and open. I can water and get fertilizer in there, which I might go ahead and do here in a little bit. Right now, the pool is still <laughs> refilling. I don't know. I don't want to dive back into everything that happened last week. The backyard flooded. The pool was a mess. Drained it down. Partially refilled it. I did a clarifier. Thank you to the person who suggested that. No, oh, I didn't think about that. I had some in the pool box too. I just never used it before. I dumped some of that in there and the next morning, boom, crystal clear. Well, ish, right? Not perfect, but huge improvement. It clumped everything up so that the vacuum can suck everything up, but the water level had to get back up in order to use the vacuum. So that's what's going on there. Looking a lot better than last week. The whole patio is power washed from here all the way to right there still need to do this end of the patio but my point there when i said i should go ahead and fertilize is that right now i need the hoses in the pool because i can't have the filter running at full capacity until the water all the time for the skimmers so it's just it's a whole thing but tomorrow we can fertilize tomorrow <laughs> the weeds i swear i feel like they're so much worse this year maybe it's because i didn't put down a pre-emergent which i some i don't always put one down though i was gonna say sometimes i do that Sometimes I don't. I almost never do down here. So a bunch of stuff I need to pull in there. Like some of these, <laughs> they're getting pretty impressive. That's not supposed to be there, but it's gotten so big and impressive. I'm just kind of like, oh, should I just let it do its thing? I try and let things go wild on this hill, but I don't know about that wild. Especially when I've been pulling them as much as I have them. But I just, I don't want to be hasty. Because like I said, I do kind of like to let that hill garden area just do its thing. So... I don't know, I have to think about it. I know I should pull it, because if it goes to seed, then they're going to be everywhere, but they're already everywhere, and they pull up so easily, that's not really that big of a deal. And it might be seed that the wildlife really enjoys. So, again, going to think on it. Also, last week, I hung up hanging baskets. Got these new hanging baskets on sale. I think they're $16.98 from the Home Depot. And uh, I bought three, so I have this extra over here. It has this tattoo vinca in it not sure which kind and dichondra probably the silver falls i don't know though it doesn't have a label but i have the other hook so i was going to put a well there already is a hook on this side of the door but another one right here so they're framing that doorway then i have that one right there which i think is going to look weird i know ultimately i'm going to end up with a whole bunch of hanging baskets up here but for now for this year i'm just going to stick with this and get that other hook put up here i don't know if that's going to be tricky. Yeah, I think that's going to be tricky. I've got a lot of stuff over here I'm going to have to move. The Sun and Patient needs a new spot. I've been keeping it over here, back here on top of this queen palm pot, but I just don't think it's getting enough sunlight. Or maybe it's just having a little bit of a break because it is covered in buds right now. Oh, uh, that might be something else I give a few more days. These cooler temperatures have me thrown off. I'm not used to July having days in the 70s and lows in the 60s. It's very bizarre. I mean, we've had plenty of days in the 80s and nearly 100, maybe 100 in some areas. But the last several days since that storm last week have been very cool 
for July. I'm used to July being the month where everything just feels like it's on fire. Like there was, I don't know if it was last time or summer before, where it got so hot that the patio got a giant crack that went from there all the way down. The whole thing just went pop. It pops the patio. And those temperatures affect the flowering and the growth on the plants. That was my entire point there. Let me go ahead and get that put back where it is or where it's supposed to be. And then I'm going to have to make room to get a ladder over here. I don't know. I might have to move everything because I think that the ladder, if I have that at an angle up there to get to that wall, that's going to be too much of an angle. I don't think it'll be safe to stand on it. It's fine. We'll get it done. Also, fun story, nearly brand new power washers broken. It runs, but there's a crack in here in the metal right around the spot, like down in here. So it just sprays like a 12 foot jet of water out the back when you're using it. I guess it's not nearly brand new. It's a year old, but it hasn't been used a ton. How does that even happen? Not like you pick the thing up and drop it. Nothing's been banged into it. It's on wheels. Keep it in the garage. It doesn't sit outside in the elements. I think that's odd. DeWalt, that's how that happened. My opinion on that brand has changed so much over the years. Become much more of a Milwaukee fan with a lot of tools. But whew, those are expensive. It's rambling at this point. But so hopefully some of y'all know what I mean. DeWalt used to be fantastic. And it just seems like every single time I get a DeWalt product since like 2018, they just, they don't last long. That's why when I needed a new uh, drill to use for ball bogging, I just went with Ryobi because I already had a couple little Ryobi products and I was like, why am I gonna spend a ton of money on something if it's not gonna last long, like what's DeWalt? I didn't wanna use something like a Milwaukee when you can be doing stuff with dirt, right? Although Milwaukee could handle it, that's for sure, but it's just, there's a huge price difference and they have that whole one plus system, which a lot of brands have now, but I already had some of their other things. So I was like, okay, 50, 60 bucks, get this 18 volt drill that has been Better than just about any drill I've ever had. And I have a Milwaukee and a Makata, and those are great. But this Ryobi, it's over here on the table. I, I'll make this quick, so I know a lot of y'all don't really care. But I just love when something doesn't cost a ton, but it works really well. The battery on this is insane. I've only had to charge the batteries for this thing, I think, twice since January. It is a 4 amp hour battery, so that sets you back some more. And it has the little indicators. You can see what the charge is like on it. And this thing is tough. It barrels through roots and rocks and things that when I use the DeWalt, the one that I have, the specific DeWalt that I have, just chokes up. It doesn't work. The Ryobi cuts right through it, and it was like half the price. What's not to love about that? How did we even get here? Why am I even talking about this? I have no idea. Oh, the power washer and the disappointment with the DeWalt product. It's okay. I think it's under warranty. Have to figure that out because... Well, if it's not under warranty, then I actually am going to be pretty ticked off. Okay, so the question now is, if I put a ladder right here, is there going to be enough space? Or do I really need to move everything that's over here? I think I, I think I might have to. I really don't want to, though. This thing's heavy. I do not want to move the Robolini palm. Although the spot does look like it could use a cleaning. I don't really care about that right now, though. I'd rather just focus on this and this oleander, too just been out here pruning I need to remember I keep telling myself every single day oh you need to come back here and prune the oleander and then I don't do it I need to do that I don't want it setting seed otherwise it's not going to keep on blooming right so has some buds in it but I think a good cutback would be good for it and get some more flowers out of it well it still has the potential to do that this season ha okay I need to think about this ladder situation I'm feeling raindrops which is weird because it's sunny, although those clouds are pretty rainy, so hopefully it's just a spot storm. I'm gonna get this figured out. Okay, I think it's up. Part of the background, which is the TV. Hey, kitties, you gonna say hi? Hi, Bunkin. Hi, Kitten. How y'all doing? Do you need a kiss? Give us a kiss, Bunkin. It's a little lick. Thanks, bud. You're so sweet. Got the hook here. What else do I need? Measuring tape. No, measuring tape's outside already. Don't need that. Oh, this is gonna look so good. I've wanted to have a hook up on each one of these sides. The trick with that is going to be remembering to try and make it tasteful. They're going to need to match. And uh, that uh, maybe I should paint the hooks white, you think? Or at least the bracket so that if I don't have anything hanging up, I can just pull this piece out because it just lifts right out. And then it won't look so weird because there's gonna be two right here and one over there in that corner. Because I. 
in order to make it look right, there's gonna need to be one here, one there, which there already is, one there, one there, and one there. I just, I feel like that's too much. Really does seem like a lot. I don't think that that's necessary. Also, if I were to do that, I'd have to go back and buy two more of those hanging baskets. That three is plenty. Don't need to go back and get any more. Okay, I'm gonna get tools and things gathered up and hopefully get this basket hung up without having to move the rubble eating palm. Another tiny screwdriver. That's a win. I don't know why I'm so intrigued by these. It's just, it's just a little screwdriver. I have tons of little screwdrivers. You know the ones that come in a case they use for small screws? This isn't really for small screws. I'm gonna hold on to these. Don't know what I'm gonna do with them. Maybe <laughs> good stocking stuffers. That's the only thing I can think of. Oh, that's gone. Maybe it might make good stocking stuffers. That's what I was going to say. They're perfectly good little screwdrivers. I don't know what you would do with them in this context where you're putting up a bracket on the wall that has drywall anchors, which I won't be using. I just don't see them doing anything that would be useful. I, would you be able to use this to get that into the wall? I doubt it. I highly doubt it. But maybe if you drill a pilot hole. I think we talked about all that last week. Ladders up. The angle is obtuse, but you can make it work. I guess that's technically not obtuse, but you know what I mean. Got these. I'm going to need a pencil. I'm not doing all this with one hand. It's really stupid, but I can make it work. Measuring tape. We'll come back for the driver. Okay, got most of my materials over here. First thing I need to do is go up there, measure out where I want this. I think the other one was 17 inches below the overhang the bottom of the bracket was 17 inches below i need to prune those out those two fronds those are gonna be a problem I'm gonna be up there on a ladder i may as well right okay yeah and that's the other thing I treat the thing like garbage it's held up very well i don't really treat it like garbage that's an exaggeration i've been good about making sure to not leave it out in the rain and it has gotten plenty of mud and gunk on it because of what i do with it I haven't had any issues yet but you know it's only been a few months so to be fair, my complaint with the DeWalt's had been that I only get, <laughs> I've been getting like a couple of years out of the products, but I've only had that Ryobi for a few months, so I probably shouldn't be saying too much about it just yet, right? Although I do have some Ryobi products that are pretty old and still in good shape, but I could say the same thing about some of my older DeWalt products too. Oh, yeah, you know, my dumbass. I could have just stood inside this pot. I didn't even need to get the ladder out. It's fine. I'm already here. I'm already doing it this way. All right. I think that's good. Hopefully. Obviously, hopefully. Don't want the basket to come tumbling down, falling on top of things. This, the way this works, if you didn't see it in last week's video, they've got all these little cutouts inside of them. The hanger bit, I mean. It. Then there's an iron peg up here that they sit inside of. So you just line it up so it goes, I'm doing all this through the camera. Let me try to just use my eyes. You slide it in through the other hole, and then up here you can adjust the angle and you just slot it down into where you want it to stay. That's very nice for areas like that where the wall's at an angle, but maybe you want it to stick out in a different direction. By being able to adjust the hooks that's up there, you can keep things moving the way you want them to move. I don't know if that made sense. Have everything at the appropriate angles. Don't know if you can see what I'm doing. The sun is in my face and now is, so is the hanging basket. Okay. <laughs> I think that's good. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh yeah. Yep, I love it. I think that looks so good. From back here, it's not as noticeable because the Robo Palm has just one front in front of it that I suppose I could go ahead and prune off. I prefer to not prune things off the plants if it's not time they don't need to, but, well, it's in the way and it's bugging me. <laughs> oh, it is actually kind of nice looking through and having the extra layers there. So maybe now you can see what I was talking about, how it, things are a little bit off by having the one basket in that corner and then the two of them framing this doorway. But I figure when things are set up like this during the summertime, that's okay. I think that this looks fine. It's going to be more when the three palm trees over here are gone. The windmill will still be out here, but it'll probably be over there in the fall time. That's when it will look weird. And then it might be a good idea to paint this hook over here or paint the bracket that that bar goes into, paint it white, and then can just pull the actual hook off, put that down in the cabinet for storage, and you won't even notice it's there. And then in the summer, I can have all the baskets up. 
I think that's a fair in between because I don't really want one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it'd be five. I don't want five hanging baskets to have to make and keep up with. Making hanging baskets gets very pricey. Even buying them gets really pricey. Five is a lot, and uh, I tend to do too much sometimes, and I'm very close to being there <laughs> right now. I think that this is fine. This is good. Don't need any more. I'm just happy now to have the two hooks up here. That's going to look so good. And remember, these palm trees don't get delivered until mid to late May every year. So uh, there would just be the windmill palm right here and then probably a mule palm on the other side of the steps. And I have my hanging baskets up there, my spring baskets, whatever I do. It's just going to add some more dimension and some color. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. I like how it looks. I'm, so now that I'm standing over here, I really do want to put another one right there. It's starting to bug me. It just looks so good. There's that nice resort vibe coming out the house with the flowers or the dichondra really hanging there. This one particularly is just a very nice hanging basket. It is extremely full. This is the first one I got and I got it home and I said, oh yeah, I gotta go get more. But then the other ones they had were not as full. Something else that I should probably do with these is repot them. I would prefer them being something that's a little bit more attractive even though you can't really see the pot that much. And uh, with a hanger that has some sort of chain on it because I just have a feeling that these won't last long because they never do. They'll end up falling, something happens with them. And I like having a swivel, pardon the background noise. There's a rumble between the beach ball and the fountain right now. The swivels on the hooks, they're just really nice. You can rotate the plants more easily when you water, they spin, and that's fun. Don't know if the plants enjoy it, but it's entertaining. And you just have less breakage. When these twist and move in the wind and in the breeze, they wear down and they break. So I would like to put them into a different basket with uh, some fresh soil, I think would be a good idea. But for now, this is really good. I'm just happy to have these hooks up. That looks so nice. It'd be really awesome, as much as I love the vinca that are in these hanging baskets, if there is like a cupfia or something up there that the hummingbirds are gonna be more drawn to. The hummingbirds will fly up to the vinca, but I don't usually see them hang out on them for very long. Something with a nice trumpet-shaped flower would be good. I just got them up and I'm already trying to think of ways to change it and fix it. Okay, that's been done. I think that's probably it for right now. I have some other things I need to do inside the house. Not guarding related, but we'll pick up at some point. All right, you know, the pool vacuum, very satisfying. It's not something I've used that often, but I very, very, very much enjoyed that turbo. Did you just make a fart? I'd heard that turbo. We all probably heard that. Still some green in there. That's going to probably be the case until the coring level gets up, which is going to be a while. I think we're gonna need to dump probably between 800 and 1,000 pounds of salt in here. I have, I think 600 in the driveway. So give that a go. I'm gonna do some more vacuuming first. I know, abrupt change. You know, that's just the way things are here. Nothing new with that. There was a lot of debris down in the deep end. I don't know how well y'all can see that. There, it was just like green all over the liner, green and brown. It came up so, so, so well with that vacuum. It was satisfying. So it was like nice, perfect, clean lines as it was going. I love that. But I still need to get in over here. You can actually see it, I think. Yeah, right? You can tell where that line is. You need the, the glasses, the water glasses. So you can see that line a little bit better where there's sludge still that needs to be sucked up. But for the most part, I have a lot of it up and that things are running smoothly. I don't see why I would need to drain it down again, so I'm probably gonna go ahead and try and get that salt dumped in here tonight, I guess. That would be a good time to do this. Maybe this will be clear by the end of the week, but when this video comes out, maybe the water will be clear again. That would be so nice and so satisfying. I also remembered, jumping back over to doing things with the ladder, that I have another piece of trellis I need to get put up over there, so I'm going to look for some clips, some siding clips. I don't wanna screw them in. I don't wanna drill them into the side of the house. And if I can find that, then that would probably be a good thing to do. Also, I think it's, it's time for the beach ball to go. It's been fun. The whole purpose was to keep the birds out of the pool, and it's, it's done its job. It's done a wonderful job, and now it really is just kind of annoying and always in my way. When I get in the pool, you have to get in the pool to get it out of the pool because you can't, I can't wrap my arms around it to pull it out. It just spins in circles. When I get in there, I'm going to knock that thing out and deflate it. Like I said, it's been fun, but... It's just not needed anymore, and it's very loud when the fountains hit it, especially when the dolphins are on. Like, it just sounds like there's random thunderstorms or jets flying by 
water splatters out of the pool all the time, so I have to add more water to it than I would like to. And when you're in here swimming, like swimming laps, you see the dark shadow coming while you're like looking down at the liner, trying to get in a workout. You always have these moments of panic where I'm like, swim, 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 because if it knocks me, it doesn't hurt, but it's startling. Might be the end of the beach ball for a while. I'm sure I'll blow it back up and put it back in there, but for now, I think it'd be more useful for it to not be in the pool. Back to whatever the other 30,000 things I've been talking about. Uh, trellis. Need to find my other trellis. I think this is probably going to take some tinkering. This is the siding clips. The way these work is they just, they have this bend in them and you push them in and you turn it and you have a little clip you can hang things from. Not things that are very heavy. So I couldn't put a strong vine on these little pull it right down. Not that passion flowers aren't strong vines, but here in 6B, 7A, they die back a lot in the winter and they take a long time to come back in the springtime. Like it's gotta get warm. Usually when I have a cerulea passion flower, the blue passion flower, I don't usually see any action from them until like June sometimes. That varies from year to year. I'm thinking this probably needs to go up there. I don't think I even need the ladder for this. Nope. Didn't need it, at least not for that part. Uh, this next part, maybe. These are the trellises that I'm using. They're these wooden ones that just fold out like that. So I think the trick here is going to be to try and get it on there so that it's not bigger or smaller. I want the sizes to match, but it also still needs to fit between the top of this one and the bottom of the roof there. Yeah, I don't, that shouldn't be too difficult. Yeah, okay, that worked out. Wasn't too bad. So what I do with the siding clip is I pull it open and then I find the spot where that's going to keep it centered and then pinch it back shut. That's been fine enough so far for this small passion vine. Like I said, I wouldn't do anything big on this. If I end up liking this, then next year I'll actually go get some probably vinyl lattice and paint it to match the house and put something up here that's more permanent. As the Lord knows, I already need to do a lot of painting out here. May as well get some lattice to paint to put over here. So, what is, oh gosh, that, <laughs> that's a fun surprise. Glad it wasn't a bug. Also, I'm not crazy about the spots where these overlap, but that's the way it had to be in order for it to fit all the way up there. And I don't think that'll be noticeable in a couple of weeks when this vine fills out and gets in there some more, right? Probably not. I actually don't hate the way the wood looks. I think the wood's a fine contrast. I just think vinyl would last longer. So if I want something there that's more permanent, if I am going to end up actually screwing something into the house, I'd probably rather it be vinyl. But I worry about all that next year. This year, I'm just kind of trialing it out and see if I even like having a vine over there or if something is going to arise that makes me say, oh, I probably shouldn't have that there. I don't know what that would be, but you never know. Okay. Ball is deflated. Little beach ball, a giant beach ball pancake over here. Gonna get the salt dumped in. And in my mind, it's like the water's gonna be clear tomorrow. It's not. It's not gonna be enough salt. It's not gonna be chlorine until you have enough salt in there, but it's all that I have. So, gonna have to do for now. So, get to enjoy the kind of clear water for a little while, but something tells me this is gonna take a while. I know I was just saying maybe by the end of the week. It'll be nice and clear, but something tells me it won't be because you can see the salt itself. That's got gunk in it too, which means probably gonna have to give this another big cleaning with the vacuum and that stuff to help. I'm gonna say carterize, that's not the word. Coagulate, binder, something to help gather all the dirt that comes out from inside the salt. The salt's pretty clean. This brand usually is pretty good, but you know, 600 pounds, 550 pounds, there's gonna be some particles in there. That was a good day's work, lots of little stuff. You ever have those days where you're just checking off all the little projects? This is not a little project. So I was working on the pool in between, you know, the pruning up some bananas and getting the basket hung up, was vacuuming and backwashing and vacuuming and backwashing, finally got the salt in there and it's not as cloudy as I thought it would be, which is great. It already doesn't look as green down there, which must just be because it's dark out, right? Normally the chlorine has to be present to kill off algae, although maybe the green wasn't from algae. It could have just been more of that 
gunk that was in the water. Now it's getting filtered out now that the water level is high enough that the filter is running at full capacity, potentially. I don't know. These are fun. Did you guys show you these balls? These are solar powered, just beach balls with fairy lights in them. This is the first time I'm seeing them. <laughs> Blew them up yesterday and uh, there wasn't enough sun by the time I got in the pool to see them light up. I think those are kind of cool. Decorative. I noticed, I don't think these have a hook on them, or do they? Uh, no, there's no hook. So these over, <laughs> it's a lot of zoom. These right here that change colors, they have a little loop. So I'm holding on to them with, so you can, you know, hang them from trees or whatever it is you want to do with your balls. I just have been keeping them in the pool. That's what they're advertised for. I wish they had done that with these. I think those would be really cool to hang up in a tree if you're having like a garden party, something like that. That would be neat. There's another one. Where is it? It's over here. Yeah, there it is. Look at it. The reflection of it on top of the water. I think that's really pretty. I might like it more than the color changing ones just strictly because of the reflection. I love things with a reflection. That's very pretty. Okay. That was a good day of getting stuff done. Lots of little things, like I said. We'll pick up tomorrow or <laughs> whatever. I can film like any turbo. Need to water. I have to do so much watering tomorrow. I didn't get much of it done today because I had the hoses running in the pool all day. The bulk of it. So plants didn't get much water. I gave them all like a little drink, but not really what they deserve. Uh, <laughs> really? What a stupid combination. All right, was that too outright? Lavender and Creeping Jenny, Moisture Lover, and a plant that'll just rot if you give it a lot of water. I guess the Creeping Jenny will be okay. It's not gonna grow that well, though, with the lavender. I'm at Lowe's. I, this is probably it. I've just popped in to check it out. I've been here a while. It's just at Home Depot buying salt. Didn't take you with me. Got y'all with me twice last week, and nothing's changed except that there are less plants because everything's on clearance. Oh, jeez, these are stunning, especially with my sunglasses on. Without them, not as much. It doesn't, you don't get the same effect through the camera. Love Puerto Lucaria, Portulaca, whatever you want to call it. Fun plants. I should plant more of those. The problem is when the sun goes off them, they close the flowers up, and then I'm like, well, what am I, now what? So the sun's off of most of my patio this time of year, or mm, I guess by mid-August, around two in the afternoon. So you don't get to enjoy them as much when they, well, when the flowers are all closed up. And they're messy. I don't like them on the pool deck. They just drop flowers everywhere, but they're so pretty. Not seeing much here. I don't think any of those stuff's on sale like it was at Home Depot. Everything there is on clearance. Much of the use here. Well, they're Monrovia. $46.98 for the Hicks use. Wow. Those are basically the same size as the ones I got that were... I think 9.98, 11.98, something around there. It's, that's a lot, but you know, Monrovia. Hey, I like these though. Japanese pomeus, very nice, beautiful plants. I don't. I have one of these. It's massive. I don't need any more of them. Surprising amount of citrus. Lots of citrus. I know. I'm not looking at the citrus. There were people over there, and I panicked, and I was like, "Oh, turn around, talk about the citrus." As you move on, I like the snowball viburnums. Those are really fun plants. Wish I had a spot for one. I'm sure I could make a spot for one. It's not in the garden plan, you know what I mean? Ooh, I love these. The Southern Living. It's a Carex. It says Everillo. Everillo, not sure how they want you to pronounce it. Beautiful grass. It's getting a little bit too much sun. I would prefer some afternoon shade, this kind of heat, especially with the pavement. I wondered how long it was going to take for these trendy plants to start being popped up onto these shelves with no labels on them. So that was the equivalent of just saying assorted house plant. Geez, 20 bucks, really? Prices. I know, it's a dumb thing. We talk about it anytime I come to these stores, but it's still four years. It still blows my mind. Okay, that was fun. It's crowded enough that it's been difficult to film and I'm having to be really quiet. So I'm going to go ahead and leave now. Oh. Is that everything? That's so vague. What a broad thing. Which ones? Well, it's the only place I've seen that sign, so I'm going to assume that's just over here. And uh, I'm good on ferns. Right. Got the salt in the pool. 
Well, other than that, that means maybe in two or three days that will be fully dissolved and the coordinate will kick in and clear the water up. I picked up some impatience like I talked about in the beginning. Is it? Hi. Hello. You're in front of the impatience, Turbo. You're blocking everything. It's okay. You're cute. You can block things. The impatience for the front of those bamboo planters. <laughs> Would like to plant something more exciting over there. But I just I don't think there's any room. Also cheap. Cheap is good. They're just, there's not room to work with in these two containers. The bamboo has filled them out so much that whatever goes in the front of them is going to have to be something that comes in a six pack, right? Something I can just like pop them down into these little gaps. I'm not going to be able to get great big annuals in the front of these like I used to. And I think that this is fine as long as I don't really have to worry about this, but if I were to have planted these earlier in the year, make sure they get their mid-season cutbacks, they stay nice and bushy and full, then that would be the way to go. Uh, but I don't, I shouldn't have to worry about that. Impatiens, they can get really long and lanky in these containers. I've done them over here before, and it looked okay. It's just, like I said, they got long and lanky because I didn't give them their mid-season cutback. That's something I'm not very good about doing. I don't like doing it. I hate doing the mid-season cutbacks. But a lot of my annuals got planted so late this year that I don't think that's going to be a thing. Uh, yeah, I just grabbed a flat of these pink and a flat of orange. Throw them in there. I don't. There's not going to be like a dramatic before and after. If you see what I'm working with here. It's going to take some time for that to look really nice and showy. Oh, rookie mistake. Always check your six-packs and... 8 packs, 12 packs, whatever you're getting with those smaller annuals, they end up with cells that don't have plants in them, and I, I didn't do that. So I was short one, yet somehow I ended up having an extra, not somehow, that means I just, I wasn't paying attention. When they're planted this close together, making sure that they alternate perfectly really isn't that important, because they'll all blend together in a few weeks. Then I took the extra one, and I just shoved it over here in the Edenidia container. You can't see it, I don't know why, it doesn't matter. It's just leaves right now. There's nothing to see there, so that's good. Gonna have some color over here sometime in the next few weeks. Also got a package in the mail, a package that was overflowing with orchids, nice orchids. And uh, I'm pretty sure that that video will be out. So if you wanna know what's in there, it's probably the video prior to this one. If you'd like to know about the orchids, the video prior to this one that should have all the orchid stuff in it, I would imagine. Now, I need to do some more pruning. You can see I got some stuff I need to cut off of the uh, Gossia palms over there. And then get all my yard waste picked up and fertilize. This would be a good day to fertilize. That's something that I'm not going to do on camera because it's going to be really boring for everybody. I'm trying to think of what is it that I need to do that is worthy of even talking about on here. I don't even know. Uh, I do still have some repots to do. I keep talking about that and then I keep forgetting about it. I don't know. This doesn't need to go yet. I could just, up oh, here, I'm gonna cut it right around here. Right there, that's good enough. It still has a good amount of green in it. I wanna make sure the palm tree can utilize whatever's left in there that it wants to use, but I also didn't wanna keep looking at this brown frond, having that hanging over everything. It was getting old and nasty, and it's always hitting in the face too. I came out with some Neem Max last night and sprayed deep inside of all the banana trees in there on top of the colocasas. I was very, very, very careful to not get it on the flowers. I'm sure there were some that got on the flowers, but tried my best to make sure to keep the pollinators safe. I just weeded here, like the very beginning of this week. Came in here and pulled weeds, didn't I? Maybe I'm thinking of down there. Okay, got some more to pull. Try and remember that for right now. I am more focused on the pruning. So over here with the Eureka palm, this is, uh, it's getting really full. That's normal, that's what it does. And I like for it to do that, but it's gotten to a size where I mostly am focused on maintaining the larger growth on the outside. So uh, generally a couple times a year, I come in here and I prune out all this stuff on the inside. I do that for a few different reasons. It is partially for aesthetics. I like the way it looks when things are more open but mainly for pest control since we've been talking about the um what was it the, the, the spider mites right it's that time of year moving into july these things are squeaky hopefully that's not too annoying for the camera 
this is the time of year where the bugs start to show up and get pretty bad. So I like to make sure that things are open on the inside so that if I do need to spray, it's a lot easier. And also just making sure to have proper airflow around the plants makes a big difference with a lot of the pests that I've battled with, mainly spider mites and the aphids, white flies, and mealybugs. And like I said, I think it just looks better when it's open on the inside. Also, it's been tricky to get water to the backside of this plant because things are so full in here and it's hard to get the hose to wrap around everything. So when it's open, I can get in here and hold the hose more central inside of the plant. I'm just gonna pull that paper out of there, but I think I may as well just cut that one off. Doesn't need it. Yeah, see, I think it just looks much better when it's open on the inside. Also going a lot more light to come in for everything that's been underplanted here with the palm tree. I know people sometimes get upset when I prune the areca palm, but listen, we do this two, sometimes three times a year. It's fine. It's just pruning the undesirable stuff that I'm trying to keep at bay to make sure that everything else that's in here that has nice healthy growth on it can keep growing and be nice and healthy. Why'd the breaker just trip? What just happened? Power just went off over here. There's just so much out here that's growing so wonderfully, which is a great thing, but a lot of it is also in my face and in the way of light and whatnot with some of the plants. Never thought I'd come in here and prune the bamboo because every stalk has always been so precious, but I really, that was just, that was too much that needed to be opened up in the front. And it'll be nice to be able to walk around over here without getting your face slapped by bamboo. Bamboo's so pretty. Does this do anything in a vase? Can I stick that in a vase? What will happen? I'm guessing not much. Bamboo has a tendency to dry very quickly, so I don't think it takes up much water once it's been cut. I have a, what is it, the power palm. It needs a big cutback. Oh, and apparently, so does this thematophyllum throw in a bit of a fit. I think I may have over-fertilized the thematophyllum, judging from the drastic change in the leaves that happened out of nowhere, and it was about three days after I fertilized, so guessing that has something to do with it. It's okay. They're tough plants. It'll bounce back from it. The parlor palm, it needs lots of cleanup. It's got all of its old winter stuff in there, and uh, this time of year, I usually do like an extremely heavy prune on this. I just, I don't like doing it because it's tedious and takes a long time. Where essentially I cut this back to just having like maybe one leaf and uh, the spear on each trunk because it needs to get opened up. So it can be sprayed appropriately because this thing gets riddled with spider mites and uh, need to be able to clean it off so that that doesn't happen, right? But to start with the dead stuff first. I should actually probably be using my finer snips for this. These big ones are probably overkill, but it's fine. It'll do. I know some of these are green, but they got to go because they get in the way of being able to get to everything that's in here on the inside. Like, look at this right here. All these old leaf bases. Those are just hotels for mealybugs. So if I don't get those off this time of year, not that big of a deal. But by the time I move them indoors, I want all that stuff gone and open so that can keep things sprayed appropriately. It's also good to be able to get in here and have a nice look at things. I think that this one's good. I don't see anything in there as far as pests are concerned. There were some leaves that looked like they maybe had mealybugs, or not mealybugs, spider mites on them, but those could just also be fronds that threw a fit from the temperatures. You know, we're, we have these days where it's like 75 and then 102 and then it cooled down and then dry and torrential downpours, just lack of consistency isn't something the Neanthabellas seem to appreciate. They always throw a fit with that, so that might have something to do with some of those spotty leaves that are up there. And it's nice to be able to track the growth on these things. Like once I come in here and clean all those brown stuff, there's gonna be a nice, big, beautiful, open trunk on this plant. Typically with soft-trunked palms, smooth-trunked palms, the rule is to leave these sheaths on and let them self-clean if it's a self-cleaning palm. But again, it's just, it becomes a hotel for pests, so I prefer just get them out of there while I can. Yeah, that's better. So the main thing, just clustering palms. I like to keep the inside open, particularly this time of year, because this is when the pests start to show up. And then again, in winter when they're inside, so just cleaned out. The majority of the brown stuff, there's some fronds on here where some of the pinnae is brown, but the majority of things are green. So leave those, right? 
still have energy to give to the plant. They can still photosynthesize. No reason to cut those off. Just wanted things nice and open so that when I spray with the neems and things, it can actually get in here and do its thing. These, I also, I refer to this as a clustering palm. It's not really, but it's the same idea because it's a lot of growth tight into each other. Need that airflow on the inside. And the Neanthabellas tend to hold onto their stuff for a long time. By stuff, I mean their old leaf bases. They hold onto them for a long time. And their old inflorescence. So I left some of these on here so I could show you what I'm talking about. These guys right here, these were flower stalks, the inflorescence. And I'm not pulling those off until they're ready to go. So anything that if I had to use much force for it to pop off, I just left it. So like this, that didn't want to come off. But anything that's down here were things where I could touch it and just kind of gently pull on it and they went, they like snap. Feel a snap and they pop right off. Those are the things that I pull off. Don't want to use too much force. And uh, yeah, I think that looks better. I know that it looks weird right now, but this right here, all this light yellow stuff that'll be dark green in about a week and it'll look like nothing ever happened. It'll just look like a much healthier, more lush plant. And can you just take a moment to appreciate this Neanthabella? I know right now it's not looking its best because I just did the heavy prune on it, but it has done so much growing since I got this plant, which, well, I would hope so because I've had it for quite a long time. They aren't the fastest of growers, but you know, you just think about the power palms and how you usually get them in just a little like two to three inch pot for a few bucks, usually sold with terrarium plants and things that they're not really all that suited for. And you just have a whole bunch of seedlings in one container and that this is what they start to turn into after several years. I think I got this in 2018 or 2019. I'm guessing that's just a guess. I'm not positive. It's been a long time. It takes them a minute to get this kind of growth on them. And they only max out at like three to five feet. That's highly dependable on your climate and how you're growing them. I've heard some people say that theirs get like seven feet tall. Maybe. I don't know. In containers, I've never seen them taller than about three to four feet. So this one right here is probably about three feet, but that's all the way to the tip up there. As far as the trunks are concerned, maybe at the most 24 inches in there. That's pretty good. And like I said, once this greens up some more, that's going to look so much better. I promise. Right now it's looking, well, it's looking like it's been through it because it has. It's been through it. Let's not be judgy. Give it some grace. The plant just went through something. It'll be okay. It just needs some time. Okay. I'm trying to think. What's next? Oh, probably the elephant ears. They have some leaves on them that need to go mostly because they're infested with spider mites. I sprayed them, but still with some of them, I prefer to just cut them off. And some of the older foliage on the alocasia, I think should go too. And then is that gonna be it for the pruning? Might be able to take a couple leaves off of that red banana down there. Yeah, I think as far as anything that's worth talking about, that's about it. That feels good, glad to have that wrapped up. Oh, but always more weeds. <laughs> that's how this all started. This entire video was weeds. Oh, these are not weeds. This is a weed. That needs to go. But uh, I don't I don't think they look very good here right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull them. These are the Pedicetes Japonicus Neighbors Lawn Care Company's right on the other side of the hedge, I'm sorry. And they grow like insanity and I have to pull them from the front of this in the summertime or else they choke out the impatience. And they're very nice to have out here otherwise in the springtime it's nice and full they always flush back out and it looks really good actually i think it's been a nice planting having these that come up real early in the late winter early spring so this is nice and lush and green and then uh, when the heat of the summer or heat of the spring starts to roll in and it's time to get these impatiens in the ground these are starting to fizzle out because it gets really hot and then i can just pull them up and plant the impatiens and then they're so vigorous that they just come back every year and things look great. And I always, I try and leave a few, right? It's the ones with the solid green leaves that get really, these huge leaves. Those are the main ones I pull. The little ones with the variegation on them, they can stay. No reason to cut those out. I wonder, do I need my pruners for you? Or are you ready to just clean up on your own? Yeah, I don't know, use a little bit more. No, I shouldn't have done that. Okay, see this right here? This is what you should not do. They're supposed to pop right off. They shouldn't be behind that skin. So with that right there, I'll just have to grab my clippers. I didn't know. I went a little bit too hard and I did the thing you're not supposed to do. 
Okay, weeds, more weeds? Yes, always more weeds, these things, everywhere. Don't wanna forget about these. I bet y'all thought I was going to, didn't you? I know you did. Those of you who had no faith, right? No, I remembered, but it's <laughs> fair to assume that I wouldn't have. This is the kind of thing that I would completely forget about. Oh good, that was just one. I thought it was more. The arums are coming up, looking beautiful. Not Arums, this is a voodoo lily, and I can never remember its name. It's a something something Gigantia. <laughs> Planted a whole bunch of them last year and squirrels got to most of them, but that one I've had for like a decade. Comes back flawlessly every year, despite always having the ground totally disturbed and torn up over here from planting annuals and all the mulch and everything for the gingers. It always comes back. I love that, just a couple green leaves, but I love it. Reliable. That's why I like it. Wish the others had not been eaten by the squirrels, but oh well, it happens, right? My goodness, look at all these over here. That's embarrassing. I don't come back here very often. This is a corner that I never, ever, ever see, and Colby has not been great about eating the weeds this year. He's become a picky eater out of absolutely nowhere. He doesn't want to eat the stuff on the ground over here. He does that sometimes. Colby goes through phases where he can be more finicky about what he'll eat and he's just been like no no I just want lettuce right now just give me lettuce strawberries very into the strawberries we can't have too many of those he's a desert tortoise those are pretty nutrient dense so those are just treats why am I talking about this oh the weeds this was up to Colby he was supposed to do his part and clean up his area but he wouldn't do it it is getting more and more difficult to get up here <laughs> because I keep planting things up here I've gotten rid of my walking space. These are the weeds I showed at the beginning of the video and I said, I wish you'd leave them and see what they're gonna do. No, they need to go. Missed the root on that one, it's okay. It's not like I won't be back up here shortly, probably in another week or two, to pull more weeds. These things are just everywhere this year. The nice thing about them is that they're kind of fun to pull because they pop right up and they're crunchy and they pull apart real easily. So there's something very satisfying about pulling them up, um, except that a lot of them do just split. How, as I was saying how easily they come up, I happened to grab onto two of them that did not want to come up, and I broke them at the ground. And it didn't reach down far enough. Sometimes you just gotta go down further. Okay, I think that's better. There's still some weeds over here, but that's okay. This area is never going to be flawless and perfect. It's so like I mentioned, I kind of like to let it do its thing, let nature do what it wants up here. Nuts edge is a problem, but I don't really know what to do about that without coming in here as chemicals are spending a lot of time tediously pulling all their little bulblets out of the ground, and I don't want to do that. So that will be a job for the weed eater. Just gonna cut it down flat so that it can't flower. I think that's the best thing I can do right now. Where am I gonna, what was the plan here? Okay, pruning and weeding, done. I'm sure I'll continue to find things. That's just always the case, right? That's part of gardening so we're always going to find more things that need to be done but that was a good dent <laughs> glad to have that done there's something satisfying about it especially the prune because i don't spend a ton of time pruning i like to just for the most part let the plants do what they want to do but it's good to get it and clean them up every so often and i actually now that i'm looking at it should really cut back these begonias they're not looking too hot but i'm going to save that for another day because i want to actually like, have a better look at them and i don't have time there are other things i need to do first i'm going to clean up all of my little leaf piles they're everywhere piles of pruning debris oh, oh oh no 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 still got one thing left to do I need to come in here and prune these guys off of the patio they are growing over way too much and i don't want to lose patio space i want to keep the nice lines that we have here and get those off of everything yeah, see, even just this one spot, that already looks so much better. Yeah, look at all the junk. It was clogged up underneath those things. That was another thing, is they catch a lot of debris. The ones down here, I didn't prune on them. I just <laughs> took them, and I'm just like, trying to correct them. Say, hey guys, go this way. Grow down there. I think that that looks better. More manicured, less wild. It'd be fine to keep them where they were, but you know they were just going to keep going, and eventually they'd be all the way out here, and that's, this is not going to look good. It would look dumb. It's starting to feel more like summer again out here, getting sticky. I just went down a drip irrigation rabbit hole that it's just, it's, sometimes that stuff just wipes my brain. The puzzle pieces 
of the configurations when putting together an order can wear me out. So I know, big transition, right? Nothing needs to make sense at this point in the video. We're far enough along that I'm just gonna tell you what's going on. When I was refilling the pool, I tapped into the sprinkler heads that are down here on this end because they're just, the water pressure from my garden hoses is horrible. It's terrible. It's so sad and pathetic that when refilling the pool, it just took an absolute eternity and I was getting impatient. So I tapped in with a half inch into the sprinkler systems. And by doing that, I can just pull out my phone, hit a button, it'll run for however long I set it to run and then it turns off and then I don't have to worry about forgetting that the hoses are on or anything like that. Or I can even shut the hoses off. Say if you wanna like take a shower and have water pressure in the house, you can turn these off and still have something to work with and not worry about things overflowing because it's on a timer. And I started thinking, why not run my drip like this? Like throughout the entire garden. It makes sense. There are only a couple of reasons not to, mainly being pressure, right? This is all set up with a booster pump. Booster pumps emit a lot of pressure, perhaps too much for drip irrigation, but there are reducers you can put on your lines to slow the pressure down. I don't think I would even have to do that because if I do what I want to do here, I'm just thinking out loud here and I'm bringing y'all <laughs> for the ride. So everything I say may not happen, but as I talk through it, maybe I'll get more ideas. With this line right here, I can flip that, take it around back here in this garden bed, bring it over here and that'll solve an irrigation issue I've had with everything over here being that the sprinklers just, they can't get up this slope. The camera doesn't do it justice, but there's a severe slope right there and because of that it's hard to get water up to everything the gingers and the arbs they would like some more water it would save me some time watering if i had a drip line that ran through here i don't traditionally have drip over here in this area because there's nowhere to tap into the main line of the water without having to run a drip line across this patio getting it underneath everything is a possibility but it would need to be done in the fall or winter when the palm tree's not here it would have to excavate this entire area because there is a line that goes underneath there. there's a pvc line that as long as it hasn't cracked over the years could potentially run a hose through i'd also have to dig up all of these guys over here i don't want to do that especially when there's probably enough pressure in this to go ahead and run that line to go through here all the way down i could take it up this berm right there and then I would have a micro sprayer probably one every I'd say seven to eight feet in this berm so I'd only need about three or four of them right there I would need two three over here I could even put one over here the sprinklers don't hit the spot very well I can run that up the hill and go one two sprayers I think would cover everything that needs the water over here and I can come off the line bring something over here to handle this pot go over there come across probably have to put a 90 degree coupler to bring it around the front of everything because from the back I don't think they'd get the proper watering one more sprayer in there tap in for this line uh, or add a line I should say for this container right here the Miami planter and then could take that line with nothing else on it and bring it all the way down because these don't need irrigation everything right here pretty drought tolerant might add one over here don't think I necessarily need to though so what I'm saying is nothing from that area down there where the tie giant is all the way down until we get to the bamboo planters needs drip so i could continue that line all the way down this entire wall and tap in drip right here tap in drip for this tap in drip for that get a couple of heads up here on the hill that has been a horribly difficult place to keep watered with the irrigation system my sprinklers don't head up there so everything up there mostly has to get hand watered i have a sprinkler head that's on a riser right here that gets some of the stuff in the front but nothing in the back and i would only need one probably two maximum three micro sprayer heads for all of that and uh, i think that because of the length of that line a few hundred feet probably 200 feet of it i don't think the pressure would be an issue especially with that many micro sprayers on it it'd be like 18 ish micro sprayers you know what i'm talking about micro sprayers are there it's a basically a drip head on a stick and it just it, it provides water for a larger area so you're not going direct to root but i would probably be using 360 spinners so it's a fan spray that goes out 360 degrees they're adjustable and they max out at i think like 8 to 14 feet and that's with the best pressure i rarely ever had enough pressure to get them to cover an area that's more than about five to six foot 
five to six feet. And so then all I would have to do out here as far as adding more drip would be just this area right here. So I'd only have one timer that I have to mess with and everything else would be hooked up to the irrigation system off of that zone down there, that zone six. So whenever I would run zone six, I could set it for whatever frequency and time I wanted to. I think that this is a really good idea. It's complicated and it's frying my brain a little bit finding the right parts for it. But there are a lot of parts that they're starting to sell now to tap into your irrigation lines to set up drip or add drip to them. It requires some digging and some thought. But in the long run, if I could get away from having to use these battery operated timers that never last very long, I just think they're a huge pain in the butt. They're a giant waste of money. This would be so good. And it would be one line that would cover all of that. I'd still have to, you know, water the pots around the pool. I could maybe run a line to the container from the guard bed right there and one right there. But I'm kind of liking not having lines running across the patio this year, but that might be an option if I decide I wanted to do that. And then everything over here, I would just run off of one drip line that would go from here and down and I'd take it underneath this step right here and pull it around everything so I can just put drip up on everything from behind. And I think there'd be enough pressure to do that because I don't really need the drip in this bed from there down to here. I would maybe have one head in the bananas and uh, well actually that's probably about it in the bananas where it's hard to get the water back there because the, the sun patients have gotten so big they tend to block the sprinklers you got a big wall of flowers there so it's been difficult to get water back there talked about that when I was pruning up the bananas that one of the reasons you need to be pruned was because it's difficult to get water to them when you got a wall of leaves in front of them and if it turns out that there's not enough water pressure because that's 18 micro sprayer heads is that's a big suck on pressure that may not be possible but if that is the case then all i have to do is well just end the line right there and then i can come over here and tap into the irrigation on this side of the yard for everything over here so there's really not a good reason not to do it other than that well over here i'd have to do a lot of digging to find the irrigation line and tap into it but I think I might rather do that than mess with all these stupid timers. It'd save a lot of money, because I have to replace these timers every one to three years, somewhere in there. I've never had one last longer than three years. I think this might be something I end up doing. I already have a couple hundred feet of tubing over here, so I'm good to go as far as that's concerned. And uh, I now have like 75 items in my Amazon cart. <laughs> Various couplers and drip heads and things that are made to tap into a half inch irrigation line and some I think for three quarter inch because I think I have three quarter inch over here and it's not 75 like individual items it's like things that are in packs of 12s and packs of 13 the drip stuff it's pretty cheap I think overall it's like $55 worth of materials and I think that that would do the job I don't know I'm thinking out loud here if you guys have any input if you're really familiar with in-ground irrigation systems and water pressure since I don't know what my PSI is that's not I, I don't I don't know what you're gonna do for me but Maybe you've tried this before. I don't know. But it's becoming a thing and people are starting to do it. I just say it because they're selling a lot of parts to make it possible to do that. It would be so nice. That just seems like the most ideal way to do things. As it is, I would do this right now if I had a coupler. I don't have a coupler. I need a half inch coupler and I would attach to the line that I showed y'all that's dangling in the pool. Pull it around in the garden and then just pull out the hose. Take it all the way down behind everything that wouldn't take more than five ten minutes at the max just to get it laid out then to pinch the end and close it off and you just start tapping in with the you know the ear the, the, the drip gun thing you, when i do this i think i'll bring it along i wasn't going to film redoing my drip this year because every year i do a video on drip but this is something different and i think it'll be worth talking about or really be more worth filming because it will probably be a whole lot of me trying things then messing up and having to start over and it's going to be a puzzle might be fun i think it might be a really good time hi pp he's so happy did a lot of swimming today didn't you finally got to go back in the pool and do your swimmies salt level finally hit the spot where it's supposed to be at so the chlorine's doing its thing that's going to clear up everything down there in the deep end where the water still has a slightly greenish tint to it not much but a little bit i think i'm not this, when this all happened I, I i don't care it's not a big deal it's just a swimming pool it's just mud easy enough to clean up the patio still a thing it's been power washed and then things dry and you see more crustiness that's just the nature of being outdoors i really i need to stop talking i need to fertilize i just spent about an hour and a half watering <laughs> with the red hose i use the red hose 
because it has high water pressure so I can water fairly quickly. And then the orange hose, terrible water pressure because it's a five eighths, might be a three quarter inch hose, can't remember. But that's a one inch hose. This right here is just pathetic. But this one is hooked up to the fertilizer. I think that the fertilizer would go too quickly if I hooked it to the one inch hose. And the one inch hose doesn't reach everything, so that's why things are set up like that. So I did a pre-watering because you don't want to fertilize dry soil. Uh, that'll all be a huge waste if I don't actually go over there, refill my fertilizer canister and get back to it. Because it's been about a week and a half since I fertilized and I don't like that. I was doing this, I was being really good. I was doing this on a routine schedule. But then all the flooding and stuff happened back here and I got really busy and I was like, just whatever. I just need to water quickly. So I've been using the other hose. Why am I telling y'all all this? I'm so sorry. Rambling time. Time to ramble. Okay. Hey, thanks for hanging out. It was fun pulling weeds and cleaning plants up, getting things back into shape out here after the mess that happened out here last week. Thanks. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? It's starting to be summer again. We're summer. I know some places you're having record-breaking heat, whereas here we're nearly, I think, had record-breaking cool. I don't know if it was nearly record-breaking, but that's the longest stretch I can ever remember having in July of temperatures below, like, 85. Very bizarre, but I'll take it. It felt pretty good, and it was good timing for the flooding to happen, because I didn't want to get in there anyways when it was, like, 72 degrees outside. No, thank you. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And, of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, I just remembered a thing. I think I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to use some Super Bloom fertilizer on these electric orange or tropical, whatever they're calling the orange ones. Vigorous orange, vigorous tropical orange to some patients, because none of them are blooming. So I'm going to cheat and just use it. Worst case scenario, it kills them. It doesn't matter, because they're not really that attractive, I don't think, when they don't have flowers on them. So, so I didn't need to tell you all that. Keep on growing. Bye-bye.